Nut Nerd Podcast, Episode 251, Functioning Poorlier. Welcome to the Nut Nerd Podcast. I'm Nate Heath, and we are here to help you tech better. Here with me, as always, Mr. Dave Baylor. Hello there, governor. <laughs> oh. it's, it's time for Dave Baylor's <laughs> accents. <laughs> Uh, now we can look forward to uh, 250 episodes with Dave trying out new uh, catchphrases, his welcome catchphrases. Yes, new welcome catchphrases and m- new accents. Maybe I try a uh, catchphrase in one accent one week, the same catchphrase in a different accent. Oh, so yes. there could be a variety. Oh, I cannot. I cannot wait. And I can also not wait to start talking about technology today. Yes, yes. We've, we've got some uh, follow-up. So there was a story. The Apple Watches came out. We talked about that last week. Uh, mm-hmm. I've got my new Series 6. Well, we have also talked about they have the uh, new loop bands, I believe they're called, and the sport loop and the mm-hmm. whatever they call the other one. That they come in sizes, and there's like nine different sizes. They have this PDF you can download. Well, turns out a lot of people aren't very good at measuring their wrists <laughs> or knowing that they're printing things off at 100%. Like I heard that some people were printing the PDF, PDF you know, their Chrome settings were at 93%, so it was like smaller than yeah. it was supposed to be. And I so, didn't see the printout, but someone said that there's a diagram that's supposed to be the size of a credit card. Yes. So that you could, but perhaps it's not labeled. Well, did Apple yes. not? I I, I did not look at it because I did, was not going to purchase one of those ones in my hasty ordering. But then the problem: a bunch of people got them; they had the wrong size. And if you wanted to switch out for a different size, you had to return your entire Apple Watch if you purchased <laughs> it as part of your watch. Who and thought with that was stores, a good idea? I don't know. With stores not being open, you know, it's kind of unprecedented territory for Apple here. You think this would have crossed somebody's mind? Well, now they are allowing for band-only returns. Uh, the problem is a lot of the stuff is sold out. So when you were having to return the whole thing, it might be six weeks before you get a new watch because they're so back-ordered now. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so if you did buy a new Apple Watch and you got one of those bands and it's the wrong size, you don't have to return the whole watch now. But I thought I would bring people up to speed on that lovely story. Well, I can tell you this, that if and when I purchase a new watch, one, I won't be getting the sports loop. Uh, and two, well, there is no number two. There <laughs> yeah. is no number two. I, I think until stores open, I am not ever going to try to order one of those because what a nightmare. I bet one in 10 people get the size they want. Yeah. And then what if it's a little snug and you're thinking, well, should I trade it in and get the next one? Or should I just suffer with it pulling my hairs off my arm? Or Well, and I think I mentioned my wrist changes, I don't know, an inch sometimes in a day, depending on what That's I eat or if I, weird. you know, it's, it's... Is that a normal thing? Well, an inch in uh, diameter or circumference. I pr- Probably not that much, but I do notice some days I always put my Apple Watch on the same loop. Some days it is really tight and some days it's looser so i do i'm i am probably not normal i will tell you that much <laughs> i have the uh joy of owning one of the nike versions oh yes and yeah. i've got triple holes all oh, over the place all the way so i can go offset i can do whatever it's just full of holes i i know they'll never do it but i do wish that apple had a way just to buy the watch without the band because I have some bands oh, yeah. already. You can get knockoff bands on Apple, but there's a nice profit margin on those bands. They're not going to give that up unless they had some sort of upgrade program down the road. But the, the, it's it's great. And we'll, we will circle back to the Apple Watch later in the episode. Mm, how exciting. Uh, Dave, I saw, I believe you tweeted about this. Amazon Music now has podcasts. So, Surprise, surprise, like Spotify, like everybody else. Now, your music app where you go to escape the world and just listen to some great music has podcasts. Now, caveat, I will say the Not Nerd podcast has been added to Amazon podcast. So if you're Mm -hmm. a heavy user of the Amazon music app, you can check out the Not Nerd podcast. I did uh, go into the app, looked at our podcast. They handled the uh, show notes very well. It seemed to be a very nice player. I, Again, I would highly recommend previous pick of the week, Pocket Casts, no matter what platform you're on, except for Todd on his iPod Shuffle. Won't work there. <laughs> uh, any, 
any platform that can install apps, Pocket Cast, man, it is full featured. I don't think I mentioned it before in the podcast, but I'm actually now part of their beta program. I wow, sent them fancy. an email and said, hey, I listen to more podcasts than anybody should. I'm a podcaster. I love your app. I uh, would love to be in the beta program, and I got approved to it. So uh, they are, it is, a, and it's free. They have a version. I decided to pay the premium version because I'm like, I want to support these guys. I think it's like 10 bucks a year. I believe you still use Overcast, but uh, multi-platform Pocket Cast is great. And as a quick sidestep, how do Pocket Cast and Overcast compare for myself and our listening audience? Uh, Pocket Cast, for one, again, I've said this many times before, they do play video podcasts, which there are very few out there. Uh, now there's more like Spotify's doing them for some of their new ones. It's got more control. You can, uh, like I said, Android, uh, Windows, Mac, maybe even Linux, you can use it. It's, it's just got some extra features. There's a couple things I don't like about uh, Overcast. I was trying it out again. Uh, for one, every time I install it, it tries to download every episode of every podcast I'm subscribed to and yeah. chew up all the space on my phone and everything. Uh, Overcast is very good, uh, but I prefer Pocket Cast. Okay, I might have to check it out. Yes, it's a pretty good one. Uh, but yeah, Amazon Music doing the podcast. It's like I said, it's no surprise, but like your tweet said, the last thing I want in my music app is podcasts getting gummed up in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Spotify. I just wish they would give me a toggle in the settings on my phone to say, turn off podcasts. Of course, yeah. they're trying to push them. So they're not going to do that. But I hate going through just for you section. And it's like, here's some music in the second row. Here's some music. And Oh, here's some things that look like music, but they're yeah. podcasts. So don't ever click on those or you'll be, now they'll be moved up to the top of your list. Which is funny. Apple with iTunes forever, everything was in the same app. And they just recently within the last year or two have separated everything out. Now Spotify, Amazon, and some of these others are trying to group everything back into the same thing again. Well, this might be the straw that broke the camel's back and pushed me over to Apple Music, even though there are other things I dislike about it. I think um, app, many of the things have been corrected yeah. in Apple Music. So if Spotify keeps getting too pushy with their podcasts, then I may say, c'est la vie. That's another uh, international yes. really accent. Wow. But it's a, it's a word. Yes, it's yes. in English. Speaking of Spotify and their podcast, they're adding a new feature, which I think is really interesting. Uh, they are adding polls to podcasts. So if you're in a podcast episode, you could have one question per episode, like, you know, related to the Apple Watch. Are you going to buy a new Apple Watch? And you could take a poll on that. Now, again, this is something that they're trying to get this lock in. They're trying to get everybody sucked into this ecosystem to do all this stuff. So you'd have to go into Spotify to be able to do this special feature of the poll. But it, it would be fun to be able to get some of that feedback. Again, I, I forget I like what it. the stats were. Spotify has grown a little bit, probably because Joe Rogan is there. So, uh, you know, they're trying to gain more listenership. But Apple Podcasts still blows everything out of the water. I think it's still around 60% of all podcast listening is done in just the default Apple podcast app, which is crazy. Uh, well, the, we, there, we covered audio follow up and now on to our ever never ending, uh, s cutting the cord streaming services, CBS all access. We've mentioned it many times is going to rebrand as Paramount Plus, because apparently you can't have a video streaming service that doesn't have a plus at the end of the name. I'm trying to remember, this H HBO is kind of the outlier there. They're the Max. Yeah, so the, yeah. The plus. they'll probably so in, change it to Max Plus. So let's go back in time. Apple started naming their phones Pro and Plus and Max Plus Pro. Then everybody started naming their, yeah. <laughs> their streaming services after... Apple's old naming convention, including Apple with uh, Apple TV Plus, yeah. with Paramount Plus now, Disney Plus, everything is Plus. Everything's Max. Plus. It's crazy. Uh, but yeah, so CBS, it, the Paramount, because uh, they're tied together now, and they say that there will be uh, 30,000 plus episodes of TV and movies 
that will be expanded. So I believe CBS Plus or CBS All Access, <laughs> I can't even keep them straight, uh, was mostly focused on, you know, just the C CBS programming, but they're going to be expanding it quite a bit with uh, Paramount properties, mm. and it looks like some Viacom stuff as well. For Star Trek fans, this might be the only place to go because CBS controls the television broadcast um, shows for Star Trek and Paramount, does the movies uh, in the theater, so... Maybe they can join forces and actually make a good series. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Possibly, and they are. Uh, they're going to be adding five new original series uh, to relaunch it. So, uh, like all the other ones, have an exclusive content trying to get you in there. Um, I don't think so. They said Viacom CBS, Viacom CBS Paramount is what we should has since partnered with Apple to offer a discount bundle of the CBS All Access. And Showtime for Apple TV subscribers. So it's it's this never-ending, where can I find what I want to watch mm -hmm. battle. So I'm sure we'll hear more about that. And uh, something we might not be hearing a lot more about are uh, Quibi. Our talk, uh, talk about Paramount, Paramount disappointment. Yes, yes. So uh, it was let out this past week that after six months and one8 Billion with a B dollars. <laughs> Quibi wants a new owner. Uh, in the title from Vox even says that will be a hard sell. Quibi just wants a positive cash flow. That's all they want. Yeah, yeah. No, and they're they're not going to get it. I mean, there there's some potentially good properties or you know intellectual. What do we call that? Intellectual property. property. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez intellectual property there you know some of the stars that are signed on but man and i uh was looking through to see daring fireball uh john gruber reported on this and he has been uh poo-pooing on quibi since the beginning a couple of the quick uh quips from john <laughs> gruber's quibi take quibi was a bad idea poorly executed <laughs> And then at the end, he said, bad shows on a poorly conceived platform with a stupid name, $2 billion right down the toilet. Uh, so That's so sad. Can you imagine how good $2 billion could do for the world? <sighs> Clean water, infrastructure, yeah. electricity, uh, Well, and that $2 billion went to somebody. So hopefully, hopefully a lot of people uh, were able to impro improve their own families with the, uh, wherever that $2 billion went. It all went to up. the stars who have enough money to well, yes. you know, do whatever. True, true. Oh, well. And let's. Yeah, anyway, there's got to be something good in the world going on. Dave, I'm glad you said that because there is something good in the world going on, and it's Dave's Pro Tip of the Week. Well, I teed that up for you, and you hit it right off the, the stand. So that right is off phenomenal. the tee. Right off the <laughs> I teed the ball and you hit it right off the tee. Uh, I am the uh, tee ball all-star of segues. You sure certainly are. So uh, this week I thought we would help out a listener, a beloved listener, Jared, who has a question regarding his Apple Watch. Now, I know not all of our listeners have Apple Watches. Um, if you're thinking about getting one, now's a great time. They just released the new one, as as you know. But as people use them, they, they use them for various things. And, Jared, and Jared's wanting to know how he can use his watch to its fullest potential by maximizing the battery life. I mean, let's face it. These watches are about two stamps worth of size and about a half inch thick. They do not have a lot of room for a battery. It's astounding that they last as long on a charge as they do. I mean, it's incredible. Probably about 13 hours or so is how long these guys can go. But if you want to eke a little bit more life out of your Apple Watch and use it just a little bit longer, here's a couple things you might try that could help you out. One, you could just leave it on the charger all day and not use it. So that <laughs> you yes. wouldn't have to worry. Yes. It's, just leave it at home. But uh, for those of adventurous people like us who want to go out and about, here's a couple things that I personally do and, I'm, and am aware of uh, that can lengthen your battery life. First is... Set your watch brightness to the lowest setting. Inside your settings, you're going to see display preferences on your Apple Watch. And you're going to want to set it 
to the lowest brightness setting. There are three settings, low, medium, and bright. And if you don't need it to be on super bright, just turn it down to the lowest setting. So that's, yeah. that's easy. The second one is turn off the background app refresh. Now, this may be detrimental to your usefulness of the watch. Uh, for example, if you have a third-party weather complication on the face of your watch, it may not be displaying the correct uh, temperature. I will uh, I will step in for a second okay. there because I was just playing with my new watch, and at least on Watch OS seven, if mm -hmm. you turn off uh, the background app refresh that you're talking about, if you have a complication on your watch face. That is excluded from the mm. background, so your watch complications okay. on the face do stay updated. So that because that was a con a valid concern of mine, okay. uh, but that is not the case currently. So that okay. is uh, a good thing to know. So, well, thank you for that. Well, let's dig into how this would be an advantage. Then, let's say you have some type of email program that is going out to the server to get the latest emails to bring the emails in, and you don't have a complication for it on your watch face, if it's doing that in the background, it's going to use energy. Yes. If you don't care to read a bunch of emails on your watch, you might as well turn <laughs> that feature off because uh, then when you launch the app, it'll go grab the information, sync it down, and you're good to go. It just won't be doing it periodically through the background. Yeah. And that's true for all the apps that work in the background apparently, except for the ones that have complications on your current watch face. And you so, should not be reading many emails <laughs> on your phone. And if you have notifications on turn, or on your watch, oh, yeah. I don't even do it on my phone, but you will still get notifications if you have those turned on. But yeah, it mm -hmm. won't have that all the data there. If you use a lot of apps, uh, it would be nice to have some granularity there for yeah, those. Yeah, certainly. And the third thing I, I personally do is you can set the wake screen your watch this is when you activate it and it stays on of course this is a little bit more nuanced for series five and six which have an always on watch face but for our purposes it's for when the watch is in its normal working state and not asleep in any way or the screen is not turned off completely you have an option in settings to set this to be either for 15 seconds the screen will stay illuminated after it's interacted with or 70 seconds if you want to maximize your energy usage, set that thing to 15 seconds. There are also toggles in the same wake screen setting to wake your watch when you raise your wrist. And let me see if mine, if I have mine turned on. So whether it's turned on or not, it's not working. So <laughs> mine, mine must be turned off. And then there is wake on crown up. I actually use this one at night in bed a lot. If I just kind of want to see what time it is and I don't want to blind myself with, you know, this luminous object in my face you can just slowly crank up the digital crown yeah. and it'll be just itty bitty brightness and of course the more you dial it the brighter it will become but you could also turn that feature off completely so that you don't inadvertently turn your screen on if it's brushing up against your jacket or if you're exercising or whatever you may want to turn that off and then um, there's another setting in there i just wanted to mention auto launch audio apps I don't know if this has an impact on whether or not uh, the battery is used more or less, but it is a toggle in the wake screen setting. I just wanted to mention that there is a third one there. But So set your brightness to low, toggle off background app refresh, and set your wake screen to be 15 seconds, the shortest amount, so that your battery can be maximized by not displaying the screen all the time. Now, Nate, in your travels, have you come across anything else that might uh, help our listeners uh, save battery life on their watches? Um, that one of the things that I uh, just went through yesterday, I think, on my watch, and it would help a little bit, but it also just helps my mental capacity. I went through and turned off notifications for mm -hmm. almost everything. I don't get a ton of notifications that I don't want on the watch, but sometimes like Uber Eats will push something to my watch, and I, I just don't, again, with notifications... If you're getting notifications that you don't want to see, you're more likely to just stop paying attention to all notifications. So that might be something that will help. And one of the great things on the new watch is that it charges a little bit faster. I have been mm -hmm. trying to wear it for uh, sleep, the new sleep tracking features. 
now I've got to get in a new routine of, you know, charging it first thing in the morning. Luckily, I work from home and I'm at my desk most of the day, so there is absolutely no reason why I can't charge it at any time during the day. But uh, yeah, and just just plan ahead too. If you know you're if you're going to Disneyland, make sure you got a full charge before you head out the door, or if you're going to be gone all day. But uh, the batteries do lose charge over time, and uh, so those are some good tips for helping through that. I was just trying to look to see if you could turn off the heart rate monitor. Oh. I think every, it's something like every four minutes or something. That can't be right. Maybe it's every 15 minutes. I was reading about it the other night. But at certain intervals throughout the day, your watch will go through and check your heart rate. Yeah. And it does it automatically. It doesn't appear that you can turn that on, on and off. Huh. There, there may be a setting in there. But that might be something to look at, too. If you have a newer watch that has a lot of different sensors, like the blood oxygen sensor, the ECG, the heart rate monitor, there may be ways to toggle those features off if you're not using them to extend the life of your, your battery. That is uh, another good point. If there, is, if there is ways to get those turned off. Yeah, well, I can't find them, but there might be ways. Uh, I think we might need to send Jared an invoice because I had another quick pro tip. Oh. Uh, for him, he had contacted me this week asking about Microsoft Office licensing. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, what's the best plan to get for my family? My wife needs it for some classes she's taken, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, I can look at that. Now, what, what do you actually need? And what we came to realize, I'm sure we've talked about it sometime in the last 250 episodes, mm -hmm. But uh, they have Apple Pages, the free program there, and he did not realize that you can go file export to Word. Mm -hmm. You can save your files as a Word document, and that's the issue. She was trying to submit her files as a Pages document, which is no good. Um, but Pages, Numbers, I believe even Keynote, you can export it to the Microsoft file type. The mm -hmm. native file type is not compatible. So I wanted to bring that up as a great reminder. Uh, Google Docs, you can do the same thing. Um, so if you just need to give it to somebody in Microsoft format, use Google Docs, use the free Apple programs. So he was going to try that out, and then uh, he'll report back to see if that works out for her. Well, I have two comments on this. One, any institution that requires students or lay people to provide a proprietary format like Microsoft Word is evil. You should <laughs> not. <laughs> you should not require people to submit a proprietary format for something which they have to purchase to do. Yes. It's criminal. It's criminal. Why do they do this? Well, the problem is because they have Windows machines and it is nearly criminally impossible to open a Pages doc on a Windows machine. Well, but. this institution should be using Google Docs, of which anybody can access for free by signing up for a free yes. Google account. But I will say, my second point is, don't forget about Office 365 Online. Yes. You can use Word Online for free, and you can import and export documents if you have a free Microsoft Live account. Yes. So that might be a way to create the document online, export it as a Word document, and submit it as such. Yes. Yeah. I was going to mention that to him, but... Uh, we brought up the pages thing, and it sounds like she is familiar with that, and that's kind of what they use. So uh, that might be a good solution. But yeah, that's that's the third option there. So any of them, there is you just have to take a little extra step when you save it uh, to possibly get it in the right format. But uh, hopefully that helps a few of you out there, and helps when people send people with Windows computers pages documents, and my clients then email them to me to open them, convert them, and send them back to them. Yes. Job when security. I, I just wanted to take back my, my term saying that people are evil for doing these types yes. of things. I think the correct term was ignorant. Yes. yes people yes. are ignorant is the correct term. Good point. Well, let's go get into our takes of the week. Amazon had their fall hardware event, and they announced a ridiculous amount of <laughs> new products. We'll try yeah, to go through them as quickly as possible. So they've changed up their Echo devices they're now spheres instead of hockey pucks which okay great i kind of like the hockey pucks i don't know why they went and changed it uh, the hockey pucks were low profile they took up yeah. just a small amount of space now they're these giant ball things i'm sure it's for the sound i'm sure yes. speakers sound much yes. better because they can be bigger but uh i kind of i'm a, a little partial to the hockey puck hockey puck 
design. Yes, and they have some Echo Dot Kids edition with a cute panda or tiger designs that you mm-hmm. pay in, uh, some extra money. The Echo Dot Clock, the new Echo Show 10 mm-hmm. uh, can move its screen to look at you. So if you're in the <laughs> kitchen talking to somebody, it can move and follow you. Uh, I okay, Perhaps a little creepy. Man. Yes, uh, the. Echo Show 10 is also getting Netflix. Now, this is a more interesting one. Once again, jumping on the bandwagon, Amazon announces Luna, its cloud gaming service, and a controller to go with it. Dave, as our resident gaming expert, did you hear anything on this? I did, and I actually signed up for the beta to try out, to be one of the first people to try out Luna. Nice. It's pending, of course. Yeah. That you get the email that says, "Hey, we got a lot of interest in this. We yes. don't call us; we'll call you." Yes. But in order to buy the wireless controller, you have to be part of the uh, Luna okay. program, so they won't even sell it to you. But what's interesting about the controller is, unlike these other streaming video game services, this controller does not connect to your device, which then in turn connects to the game servers. This controller connects directly to the internet by itself wow. and directly to the game servers so that when you're playing your game on your tablet and you put an input, it's going right to the servers. It's not going into the tablet to be recognized and interpreted and sent back out. So they're saying the latency between moving your characters around is diminished uh, with this controller. So I'm interested in buying the controller just to have an I don't have enough controllers. Oh my gosh! If my wife were here right now, she would, <laughs> she would punch me in the face. I've got like fifty controllers yes. of various ilk around here. It's interesting in that they're doing something a little bit different. The other interesting part is on iOS. Famously, Microsoft, PlayStation, they don't want to put their streaming services in Apple's iOS App Store because they would then have to pay Apple 30% of all this stuff and then jump through a bunch of other hoops to make it work. Well, Amazon has said, guess what? We're just going to make a web app that you can download to your phone or run through the browser that does the same thing. Now, I don't know if the performance of this web app is going to be better than an application or equal or worse. I would assume it'd probably be equal or worse. But I thought that was a very interesting way for them to kind of go around Apple's... uh, there are stipulations for doing this type of service. They just said, guess what? We're just going to do it through the web. And I think that combined with the zero latency, well, I'll say low latency controller, it might actually be a great experience on iOS. So I'm very interested in trying it out. Yeah, well, we will talk more once you uh, get your hands on the beta and possibly the controller. Uh, The next thing, this one's the one that got all the press. Ring is launching the Always Home Cam an autonomous security drone for your house. It can patrol your home on its own and return to a special dock to charge up its battery. It's set to cost 250 bucks and will ship next year. So this is one of those things, what we call vaporware in the industry. Yeah. You know, sometime in 2021, we're going to have this little drone that will magically fly around your house and tell you if something's wrong. Yeah, this thing, I you had sent it to me and I'd said, hmm, this seems kind of dumb. Yeah. Uh, then I, I read a little more information. I don't know if I've moved it out of the dumb category, <laughs> but there are just so many questions. Like, yeah. how does it navigate around your house without crashing into the walls or um, getting too close? To st- well, here's something that I've done several times. When you're flying a drone due to aerodynamics, if you get too close to the ceiling, the lift oh, uh, yeah. and the rotor wash goes up above the propellers and it does a negative effect and it sucks your device <laughs> to the ceiling. It's like a, a so magnet. maybe this will be the ceiling cam. Maybe, but if this thing gets too close to the ceiling, it's just going to suck itself to the ceiling and yeah, it won't be able to get down unless it shuts its propellers off and then it's going to crash in the floor. So anyway, I just have all these questions. If it works, yeah. uh, fantastic. You know, I'm not too jazzed about having Amazon fly a little, drone around my house uh, knowing that they can see every single thing that's in there. But reportedly, this is for when you're not at home, the camera is obfuscated by the tray that it sits in. It can't record things. Uh, I'm assuming it doesn't record audio anyway because audio from a drone is useless. (laughs) 
So hopefully there's not even a microphone in the thing. Yeah. So if executed properly, this could be a neat kind of party trick. Yes. Like literally, I'm at a party and I want to see what's inside my house at the moment. Uh, outside of that, I don't know. If, the, if this thing comes in at 50 bucks, I'm getting one. Yeah. If it's more than that, sorry. 200, I'm out. 250 is what they're saying. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I did hear on another podcast, they uh, mentioned Amazon said in Ring said that it's pretty quiet but it is audible so you would know that it's flying around and mm -hmm. somebody mentioned uh yeah what if you have a dog uh yeah. this this thing's not going to last if you have a dog uh, with any more energy than my precious rex does well and i think too if you have a multi-story house my guess is you're probably going to have to have one of these units on each level <laughs> yes. there is no way it's going to uh, navigate going upstairs there's no, no way no so we will move on. Uh, they also announced some new uh, Fire TV sticks. They've uh, made them mm -hmm. better, some more features on those. And at 40 bucks, uh, you know, they're a great little device. And they're going to have a Fire TV stick light, uh, which has a simplified Alexa remote and costs a bit less at 30 bucks. Mm -hmm. um, so those are actually coming out this month. Uh, we both use the Apple TV, so I, I do have a Fire Stick somewhere, but... Um, I had the fire cube, but I lent it to a friend. So, uh, well, gotcha. let's face it. I think I just gave it to him, but anyway, and they've got a new, uh, user interface for the fire TV and they're supposed to be faster and all that. They do have a uh, new Eero six and Eero pro six. This is the company they bought, uh, for mesh Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Uh, these support Wi-Fi six, which is the latest, uh, standard They have a built-in Zigbee smart home hub and work with Alexa. Uh, I've heard good things about Eero. They advertise on a lot of podcasts that I listen to. Yes, and I was interested in maybe getting one of those uh, when I updated my home, but I decided to uh, go a different route and go with Unify. But my second choice was Eero, of course. Yeah, so. yeah. So if you're inter in the market for some new Wi-Fi stuff, check that out. Uh, Ring has a new line of security cameras for cars. Uh, the car alarm and car cam, uh, they'll be available next year. Uh, Ring Car Connect that other that car manufacturers can use. I believe Tesla is going to be doing some of this. Mm -hmm. It uh, connects to other cars' built-in security systems. Yes, and they're improving Alexa, and it just goes on and on. Amazon announces Alexa Guard Plus, which adds more security features to your Echo device, which makes you think, why do I need more security features on my Echo device? But this looks like it's a security monitoring system. So yes. it's not security from the Echo itself, privacy concerns. It's uh, a security, which if you had an Echo and you could do audio monitoring, some sort of thing there, five bucks a month, yeah. that might be worth it. Yeah, it's got something built in already. You can turn guard on and off. Uh, maybe it's because I'm a Prime subscriber, but if it's in guard mode, the light does a certain color uh -huh. and it, it listens for things like breaking glass and okay. dogs barking and those type of things. And it can send you a notification. Okay. So, so this adds security monitoring on right. top of that. It's, so. it's an, an addition to the current guard system that they have in place already. Very nice. Well, I think that's pretty much the Amazon devices they announced. That was a uh, long list. If you have any questions about any of them, I'm sure we'll circle back to some of them as we hear more. The gaming, definitely. and Maybe mm -hmm. that drone thing, if it ever <laughs> decides to actually be released. Uh, but yeah, an interesting event from Amazon. Uh, I will remind our audience that we are the most nonpartisan tech podcast on the internet. Uh, and this one, I might even label it not news. Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, who I could do probably an hour on uh, himself, signs order banning sales of new gasoline cars by 2035. Mm. So... This is uh, that you would any new car sold by 2035 would have to be electric. Now, you might remember that over the last month, uh, California has had rolling power blackouts uh, because their power grid cannot handle the power in the fall time when the weather is warm and uh, everybody's using their air conditioners and then there's fires and everything else going on there. Uh, so there was 
plenty of meme this week of uh, how are you going to charge those electric cars if the power grid can't handle things now. Now, this would be great if we moved all electric. Where the electricity comes from uh, affects the environment as well. Uh, so there's that to consider. But it was done with the motivation of you know improving the environment. Gavin Newsom signs this order. He probably won't be governor then. So I, I don't know what power this had. It looks good it's for the so news cycle. so far in the future. How do you even... I, yeah, it's like all this. of the tech companies that do the, you know, we're going to be carbon neutral by 2070. And it's like, I, what is 2070? You to yes. <laughs> yes. It's just, a, it's a press release. And uh, so I will leave that one at that. There's some information came out about the Apple App Store, and it says they have rejected 150,000 apps in 2020. Uh, so mm. kind of like we were talking earlier with the streaming services, but they get about 100,000 submissions per week. Now, that is new apps and updates to apps. So mm. uh, I would guess a small portion of that is new apps, but... A lot of people try to sneak a lot of stuff in there, and they have rejected 150,000 apps this year. So it's not just Fortnite. Yeah, I I can't imagine the deluge of apps that come into that process, and um, they must have some really powerful software that kind of dictates, you know, it's like a gate, what gets in, what doesn't get in, what needs to be reviewed, what doesn't have to be reviewed. It's it's mind-boggling. Yes, it is. It- is the the team that they have to have and the fact that mistakes happen you know it's it's going to happen when you're doing doing that um our next story now this is a uh, kind of a callback to episode 112 my pick of the week that time there is a new charity which again the fact that there has to be a charity for this hurts my head it's called <laughs> two screens for teachers now uh many teachers currently are having to uh, adjust to online learning and teaching. And they found that there is a ton of teachers who just probably have their tiny laptop and they're trying to teach a class, monitor a class, look at their stuff, do everything on this one tiny screen. So there's this charity that's been set up to get them a second monitor. Now, Please, education system, can we equip our teachers to teach our children with a second monitor? Uh, But, hey, this charity is going to try to help out with this system. Uh, As you can tell, I am in no way passionate about our education (laughs) system and the shortcomings within. Yeah, I just saw this and I was like, the fact that there has to be a charity to get teachers a second monitor is frustrating to me it is yeah and it begs to wonder where where is the money going for education because it's certainly not to equipping teachers to do their jobs yeah so i uh i might even look into donating to these to this charity uh you can buy a monitor for a teacher at two screens for teachers.org but man uh, that's we need, we need to, if we're going to be doing this online learning as tough as it is, and the teachers that I've talked to, uh, having a second monitor, that was my pick of the week back in that episode, is mm-hmm. have, I could not function, uh, or I would function much more poorly, poorly <laughs> poorlier. I would function <laughs> poorlier if I didn't have my second monitor here to be able to do uh, multiple things at the same time. So uh, yes. good on them for, for trying to help out. Our security and privacy stories of the week, you actually found this one, and I saw it a couple places as well. The Windows XP source code has leaked online. Now, uh, the article states that they believe this is the first time it's leaked, which I find that impressive that uh, yeah. this that came out um, in, I believe, the early 2000s. Uh, now, hopefully, 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 all of our listeners do not have to deal with Windows XP anymore. Um, but having the source code would give, uh, you know, would be hackers a lot of information of how they could break into XP. And since Microsoft mm-hmm. hasn't been supporting it for years now, you know, you wouldn't be able to do those security updates and everything. So uh, pretty crazy. Server Windows Server 2003, which hopefully your company is not using any longer, uh, has also leaked and possibly some other things. But uh, now, where were these things? accessible at in order for them to leak 
like where were they? Just I, on the I don't know. Yeah, I had somebody had them on a flash drive, or uh, I did not see in the article if they had any information yet on uh, where or how. It's kind of a developing story at this point, but mm-hmm. um, it, uh, and the last sentence in the article says, bizarrely, the files also include references to Bill Gates' conspiracy theories in a clear attempt to <laughs> spread misinformation. So. Uh, all those hackers that are trying to hack into Windows XP now also have some Bill Gates conspiracy theories. Yikes. Yes. Um, and uh, I will refer to our earlier disclaimer. A Texas County voter email system was hit by malware. Uh, now again, voting is a touchy topic this year, but mm-hmm. um, they the malware attack which sent fake email replies to voters and businesses spots lights and overlooked vulnerability in counties that don't follow best practices for computer security. Uh, we've had some similar stories like this before, but you know, this one, there was actually the malware was installed and was able to send out emails, which you could imagine uh, the kind of impact something like that uh, could have, you know, mm-hmm. for the local elections there, or if it was on a larger, larger scale. And just a reminder to vote early and vote often. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> true, true. Well, our bonus odd take of the week. Uh, this one is pretty meta for us especially, but I found a Twitter thread. And what uh, I believe Andrew Norton on Twitter, he took movies where uh, the stars were wearing headphones and took out the music and put in podcasts. And it is just <laughs> absolutely delightful. So you got uh, Baby Driver, Listening to Serial, Demolition, uh, listening to The Daily. I did not, he did not do any with Not Nerd episodes. That's I was weird. kind of uh, bummed about that. Garden State uh, with Startup. So using some of the top podcasts, but I just, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers Endgame uh, with InfoWars. Uh, so yeah. You should uh, tweet him back in a reply and say, hey, you are, you have, the rights and license to use any excerpts <laughs> yes, from the yes. not nerd podcast you would like. Yes, we will give you express permission to to use our podcast for another one of these videos. But one of those things that show up, on, one of the few things that show up on Twitter that are just fun and uh, just really a fun take, kind of talking about you know the world of listening to podcasts, which I could put myself into that place. Mm-hmm. And you know what else I can put into my place? Our picks of the week. <laughs> okay. If you want to, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I'm not going to judge. <laughs> okay, so this is very serious. There could be one or more killers on the loose in our space station, in our spaceship. Ooh. What if you were walking around doing your tasks and your duties, but someone or some people were killers? What would you do? Oh, I don't know. Tell me, Dave. Well, you can find out by playing one of the hottest games right now. Among Us is the game. All of me and my fellow Utes are playing this game right now. (laughs) And in fact, uh, my daughter, her boyfriend, my son, and myself, all four of us with other random people on the internet were playing this game on our iOS devices. And it was great fun. Now, Nate, have you ever played um, the game Mafia? It's kind of like a party game. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's been quite a while. Maybe like at a youth group or something or some 4-H group or whatever. They're playing Mafia. Well, Among Us is very much like that. There's, uh, I think it's like uh, eight plus players. Um, You can create new rooms and invite people from the public to play, or you can have private rooms and play with your friends. But you are a worker on a spaceship traveling through space, And it's got very endearing graphics, very poorly drawn kind of graphics. (laughs) And you walk around and you're assigned different tasks. Go to the navigations and update the thing. And there's these little mini games that you have to do to complete the task, kind of like a WarioWare game. Uh, Just very simple things. But there are some people who are assigned the role as the killers. And Uh. when you're in a room alone with somebody as the killer, you can kill them and then quickly run away. And then uh, the body will be discovered, the game will stop, and it's like uh, Survivor at that point. Hey, who who are we going to vote off the island? I think it was the blue character because I saw him go in navigation, and that's where the body was discovered or, or whatever. And you all vote, 
and the person gets jettisoned. And at that point, they are either revealed to be innocent <laughs> or guilty. Nice. And you keep playing until either the killer or killers, you can assign more than one, uh, depending on how many people you have, either win the game or whether the innocent people figure out who they are and win the game. I know I o have over-explained this, but it took me several games to catch on, but it is a lot of fun. I wouldn't say it's my favorite type of game style because I like kind of the uh, action RPG adventure style type games and yeah. racing games, but this is near enough to the type of games that I like. Um, it's more of like a tabletop game that you might play at home with your friends. It's one of those style of games, a party game, if you will. Nice. So check it out. It's free on iOS, Android. You can pay for it on the computer. Um, you can upgrade for two bucks to get rid of the ads, which I did. And the funny thing about this, and I'll end it here, this game's been out for two years, but huh. it didn't become viral until like this past month. Until so. nobody could hang out with other people and play yeah. <laughs> tabletop games. <laughs> yeah. So, so check it out. Among Us. Nice. Well, my pick of the week, I look back and I don't think we have ever made this a pick. We have talked about it way too often, several times in this episode. Uh, I'm going to pick my Apple Watch Series 6, but the mm. I don't think we've had Apple Watch as a pick of the week. And we sing the praises of it all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but this, this new watch, you know, I wasn't sure upgrading from the Series 4 if I was going to like it. Man, the always-on display and just the speed, even like notifications, everything just seems to work better on this. Mm -hmm. um, and if there's a way you can swing it, I would highly recommend if you're thinking about an Apple Watch or upgrading your older one, the battery life isn't too good anymore. Man, check out the, the Apple Watch Series 6. And if you plan on keeping it for a couple of years, it would be uh, worth your investment, in my opinion. But I don't need to get into the Apple Watch too much because if you listen to the podcast, you know uh, our feelings uh, mm -hmm. extremely on that. And, uh, you know, if you are price conscious, like we've talked about in the last couple episodes, looking for a refurbished one, the Series 3 uh, or the SE. But, man, if you can swing it, the Series 6 is a sweet watch. Nice. Yes, our Amazon purchase of the week. We love it when you go to Amazon through our affiliate links. We get a little kickback, and I go and look at the anonymous reports, see what everybody's buying. Um, now, this, I thought this product was something that I had had on my wish list, but it is uh, different. It is the Flip It Bottle Emptying Kit Deluxe Flip Bottle Upside Down to get every last drop out of shampoos, conditioners, and moisturizers with Flip It. Great tool for salons, stylists, six reusable kits. Now, Dave, you might be wondering what in the world this is, so mm -hmm. I will send you a picture. What it is, it's a just a simple thing. It's a uh, little tripod device that goes on the bottom or on the top of something that has a pump or a dispenser on it, and then you can let everything drain out of it. I don't so, have the picture yet. There, oh, there, there you is. should have it. So it, it it's a very uh, interesting product. They have different adapters and everything. I, my wife is very conscious about making use of every drop out of you know any of the products we have. Okay, so now looking at it, there's a before and after picture, and this explains. So if you have something, I'll send this one over to you, Dave, so you can look at it. This explains what this really is. So if you have something with a pump on the top, a lotion, a shampoo, what you do is you take off the pump, you turn it upside down, and this is a little tripod with a uh, like the pull, like the old school 80s water bottles where, where you pull the top and then yeah, it allows stuff. it's a replacement stuff. cap. Yes. With little legs. With legs so you can store it upside down so everything will drain out. So I was uh, confused. So please, if you purchase this, please let us know. We'd love to know how it works. Uh, an interesting little product. So it comes, every kit includes four different sizes. So that should probably hit most of the... Mm. Uh, the bottles and that they're reusable too. Uh, so Dave, what would you pay for the flip it? Well, when you were first describing this, I thought, Oh, I know what this product is. I've seen these in the past. And I was thinking of a little coupler that goes between like your old, uh, oh, mostly I see. used product yeah. and your brand new product that you want to drip the, 
you know, let's say oil, for example, you have an oil uh, can, a quart of oil, you want to couple it with the other one or maybe an empty canister so that you can get every last drop of oil. And, you know, after six or eight quarts of oil, you might have a quarter quart of oil sitting at the bottom of your of your thing uh, that's not wasted. But this is not that. This is a cap pump replacement system. Hmm. Now, I probably could have used this for my shampoo that I had the other day. It was getting very low, and my pump could not reach the bottom of the shampoo bottle. So you have to tip it over and wait like 75 minutes (laughs) while it slowly, due to high viscosity, goes down the side of the bottle. This would have solved my problem. Now, this product was not aware that I had a brand new bottle of shampoo (laughs) sitting right there, so... That's actually what I ended up using, but it was wasteful Yeah, and I actually felt remorseful after throwing it away when there was some shampoo in the bottom and I cried for the planet a little bit. So this, um, I'm stalling because I have no idea what this thing is going to cost. So I'm going to just, just spitball this, this thing. This is a $16.99 product on Amazon. I'm just going to lay it right there you're pretty close 19.99 is mm, the current that's price so pretty close yeah yeah but uh that's uh well i wouldn't pay more than 16.99 so i guess this is not the product for me. <laughs> yes yes uh, yeah how many times do you have to use it to get 20 dollars worth of that shampoo you're i'm sure you probably use high quality top level salon shampoo top level yeah. with your uh your gorgeous mane. <laughs> <laughs> Being a bald man, you might imagine I don't use a lot of shampoo. <laughs> yes, yes. It lasts quite a while. Yes. My, my son, though, has a mop head. Oh, yes, he does. we share shampoo, and uh, he uses the majority of it. But, Nate, it's not about saving money. It's about saving the environment. Yes, Because true. there's less packaging going in the landfill if you can... Uh, use all the product. That's Uh, that's a great, great point. And on that great point, we will wrap up this episode of the podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for your questions. Thanks for sharing it with your friends. Now get out there and tech better. So um, I'm here by myself. My wife is at the coast. Oh, geez. That's why you had all this freedom to do as you please all day the son's at work the daughter's at college the wife's at the coast and here i am wasting my time hanging out with you i could be watching movies and playing video games true true i should just start Mm. over